Hey guys, welcome to Gaming Back, bringing another video today for our weapon conversion series, and today we're going to be covering the RPK-16, which is the predecessor to the RPK-74, which will be replacing that weapon in the Russian Federation Army going forward in 2020. So, go ahead and get into it, I'll show you how to build this, we'll take a look at some recoil patterns, and then get into some in-game action so you can see how it handles in-game against bots. Let's jump right into it. So here we have our final design for the RPK-16. Again, this is the modernized RPK-74, so let's go ahead and back out. And this is the final version you can see here. I'm going to strip this down, and then we'll get rid of the paint to start. And just one thing to note is this isn't an exact version of the RPK-16. We, as we've gone over the AK-47 all-build series, we've gone over the differences between uh, the AK-12 and everything. So let's jump into that now. If I go to my blueprints for the AK-47, you'll see we have the base AK-47 here. And then if we look at the steel curtain, there's several differences, being A, we have an AK-12 RK-2 pistol grip. We also have the more modernized stock, although it is not an exact for the the Ismac AK-12 stock. Then we also have the more modernized handgun. So at base, this, what's called the AK-12 in single player, utilizes this steel curtain blueprint that we see here for the base weapon. So in game, in single player, this game, this is called the AK-12, which in actuality, it's more of an ak M, a modernized AKM with an upgraded handguard, pistol grip, and obviously we have the dovetail mount there on the left-hand side of the weapon where we have the optic mounted. So from there, we were able to make some different weapons like the AK-15 and the AK-12 here, which is what it is called in the single player, which is incorrectly. But if we're going off of in-game logic, we'll be able to make the RPK-16, even though it is not quite correct. But to start, we're going to want to use the Steel Curtain Blueprint at base. So first off, I'm going to select this, and if you didn't don't know how, have this weapon or you don't know how to unlock it, I'll link the video down below for that challenge. You need to complete one of the challenges in, in multiplayer in order to unlock this. It's a very hard challenge that was released when the game came out, uh, but totally worth it. This is the blueprint you get. Very sleek looking AK-47, which is an AKM, but in single player, again, this is called an AK-12 incorrectly. But based on that logic, what we're going to do is strip this down. And now you see the differences there. We have the pistol grip as well as the receiver. We have a a milled receiver or a stamped receiver as well as a rib dust cover on the weapon as well. Turn it into an AK-12, although the gas block, or excuse me, an AKM, although the gas block does not change and it's not at 90 degrees, which we would want with a modernized AK platform. So starting out, first off, we're going to want to go with the barrel. So the barrel, obviously, we want the more modernized Spetsnaz barrel. So this is going to increase our damage at range as well as our bullet velocity, the cons being ADS speed. So we, so you can see the differences to the handguard there. It's a different handguard, and it's given us more of an M-Lock type handguard on the weapon, and more of a Midwest Industries handguard, M-Lock handguard for the weapon. So that's the Spetsnaz Elite barrel. We'll go ahead and select that, giving it more of that modernized look. Now we'll skip on the laser. And the optic, this is more so personal choice but for this video i'm going to go ahead and to make it more modernized looking we're going to go ahead and use the holographic site we don't have really the russian equivalent to this but russia does make a very similar looking holographic site as well similar to the eotech that we have here in game so we're going to go ahead and select this just to make it look the part now again the real life rpk 16 and ak-12 platforms have a picatinny railed dust cover so the dust cover here we see the rib dust cover and then we have the dovetail mounted site here which is more of an AKM platform which is the incorrect portion of this weapon but if we're going to ignore that go ahead and select the holographic now for the stock this is also a key attachment here you're really going to want a FSS close quarters stock and you could also go with the force tech ultralight as well if you were looking for more 80 aim down or excuse me aim walking movement speed but we're going to want the FFS close quarter stock this is going to increase our aim down sight speed and the cons being aiming stability, which is fine. We can go ahead and accept that. Another good option here would be the skeleton stock if you're really looking for movement speed. Uh, but we, typically, I mean, with this attachment, it seems to work really fine, good. And I think the ADS speed here you get really the movement speed and give it the old overall cosmetic appearance of a modernized a RPK 16 at an AK 12 platform. We'll go ahead and utilize that. Now we're gonna go ahead and skip out on the perk as well as a pistol grip. We're gonna keep that standard RK2 Ismac AK12 pistol grip. Now the ammunition, this is key here. One of the differences is we don't have a 545 drum mag. So you can see we have a 45 round magazine of a 762 by 39. Then we have the 545 by 39 millimeter. And then the drum mag of 75 rounds, which is the 762. So unfortunately, in real life, the RPK16 as well as the RPK74 fires the 545 by 39. 
but obviously we want to replicate that with a drum magazine. So unfortunately, we don't have the 545 by 39 but again, we have the drum mag appearance here. So for cosmetic appearances, we're gonna go ahead and select that. Maybe down the road, that's something they may add, allow us to swap out the ammo type on the drum mag, which I think would be fair since both ammo types are already in the game. Now for the fifth and final attachment, you could go with a bipod here, but personally, the bipod's really only good if you're gonna be laying down suppressive fire in a prone position, and it gives you very good accuracy. But you were tip, we're really trying to build more of a assaulter variant of the RPK-16 with this one. There are two different variants with barrel lengths being standard 21.7 inches long as well as a 14.6 inches long. So this one falls a little bit in between. We'll go ahead and select the Ranger foregrip we're going to want for the recoil control as well as aiming stability to compensate for the stock that we went with here as well. So the only cons here being aim walking movement speed as well as aim down sight speed, which we're mitigating elsewhere with the stock and as well as the barrel there. So we'll go ahead and select that. And this is our final design for the RPK-16. Now, one thing, just looking at the real life variants of this, um, I do see it a lot with a desert type camo. So that's why I opted to put a desert cam on this. Obviously, you can just keep it as the black variant that we saw, but I think this desert snake looks pretty fitting for what was showcased at shoot show for the rpk 16. so here we go our final variant of the rpk 16 and i'll go ahead and show a real image of that on screen now too uh the really only major difference is go ahead and check out the ak all builds video that i did down below as well and i highlight all the differences between the ak-12 platforms in real life versus what's incorrectly labeled ak-12 in the game now let's go ahead and jump in game and see how this thing handles with the recoil control okay now that we're in game with our rpk 16 let's go ahead and check out the recoil pattern on this weapon. So what I'm gonna do is just ADS and let this thing rip and not control the recoil to start. So you can see they're basically firing off 25 rounds there, we're going straight up and then we kind of stabilize and go a little bit horizontal recoil. So let's go ahead and try and control it for about 20 or 30 rounds. So you can see there, it definitely kicks. Let's try it again. So again, you could probably configure this to be better with the recoil control, but for the cosmetic appeal, we're gonna stick with the attachments we have. Okay, so there you go. Pretty tight clusters. We get a little bit of horizontal, horizontal and vertical recoil here that you can see. But other than that, pretty tight. These are typically all gonna be center mass shots unless you're aiming for the head all the time. You might have a little bit of difficulty, but the damage will pay off. So these are the recoil patterns. Basically straight up, if you're not controlling it, you can see here, and then controlling, controlling, and controlling again. So pretty good. Accuracy on this weapon, not the best. You could probably configure it with some different attachments being a compensator on there to sacrifice another attachment in order to help with the recoil control. But let's jump into the game here. The gameplay you can see is just me playing with bots on Crash here. Um, just trying to handle the weapon and see how it controls in in-game scenarios. So this build, since we have a shorter barrel of the weapon, it's not a 21 inch barrel. What we have here is more closely related to a 14.6. So I think this rifle, uh, you can't, it doesn't, the specialized barrel doesn't have a measurement on it, but it looks to be a little bit over 14.6, which is the assault rifle roll of the RPK-16. So I'm going to go ahead and say tentatively a 14 and a half to maybe a 16 inch barrel that we have here on the base AK with this handguard for the specialized elite barrel. It's giving it more of the assault rifle roll. So I'm trying to play with it that way best I can with the 75 round drum mag of the 7.62, which obviously is going to add to the recoil. So as I said, in real life, the RPK-16, similar to to the AK-12 platform, the AK-12 assault rifle fires uh, the 545 by 39 millimeter rounds. So same as the RPK-74 as well. So the RPK-16 actually does take AK-74 as well as RPK-74 magazines. And then also it does come standard with a 96 round drum mag. So as I said, the RPK-16 is set to replace the RPK-74 here coming up in 2020 for the Russian Federation Army along with the AK-12 and the AK-15 weapons, as well as the carbine variants of those weapons as well, which are still in development. So the RPK-16 is shaped in 545 by 39. As we said, it uses Picatinny rails mounted for the to mount detachable sights as well as a detachable bipod. So one key thing is the RPK-74 came with a fixed bipod on the weapon. So with this, roll, this weapon, you're able to attach and detach just with the Picatinny rails across the top and bottom of the handguard. Uh, it also has M-lock slots on the left and right to attach more Picatinny rails. And then obviously the dust cover 
for the RPK-16 is going to be very similar, if not the exact same, as the AK-12 and AK-15 platforms, which will have that Picatinny rail running all the way across the dust cover, down all the way down the handguard to the gas block of the weapon. So it features traditional Kalashnikov gas-operated long-stroke piston system, detachable suppressor for the weapon, it comes standard Picatinny rails on top of the receiver for mounting various optics attachments, as well as the bottom of the handguard that we said for more ergonomic devices, whether it's a bipod, or in this case, we have a range of four grips, something like an RK1, two or three grip would be acceptable there as well. Um, it has the AK-12 ergonomic pistol grip, which you see on this blueprint for the steel curtain, as well as in real life, it comes with a folding AK-12 buttstock. And there's a customized buttstocks as well for the RPK-16, but those are both going to be foldable on all platforms of the weapon, which are based around that AK-12 or the AK-400 platform, I believe it is. The AK-200 platform was a different platform, so this is the AK-12 was a finally based off of the AK-400 series. Correct me if I'm wrong here, guys. I know I made these videos a while back. Can't remember off the top of my head, but... Um, comes in two different barrel sizes. We said it, 21.7 inches for the long barrel light machine gun roll, as well as this 370 millimeter or the 14.6 inch assault rifle roll. So, which is, that's kind of what we're trying to utilize here. Um, it's designed to have interchangeable barrels, which can be interchanged in combat very quickly. So you can interchange the different lengths based on the roll of the soldier. You can use it as a squad automatic weapon or as an assault roll to say clear, clear buildings with it. It also has a combat weight of 6 kilograms or 13.23 pounds, a full length of 1,076 millimeters or 42.4 inches. Also a cycle rate of fire at 700 rounds per minute and an accuracy range of 800 meters or 870 yards. And it also uses a standard 96 round drum mag of the 545 by 39, which is also interchangeable with AK-74 and RPK-74 magazines as well so again the only difference here basically is that we don't have the 545 drum magazine we have this settled with a 762 which is obviously going to increase our recoil unfortunately but you can see here in the game plan i'm really able to control it pretty well you still move pretty decently with this particular build of the weapon even with that 75 round drum mag on there you still move and you can see i'm able to get around and my movement speed is good as well as my ads speed with the attachments that we have so Again, if the recoil is a bit of a problem, you can go ahead and put a compensator on there and swap that out for maybe one of the attachments like the buttstock since you're not typically seeing the buttstock from your perspective or even if you could swap it out for the sight if you're used to the iron sight. So let me know what you guys think of this weapon. Again, the AK-12 series of weapons for the, for the AK-12, AK-15, RPK-16, as well as the carbine variants will be coming into service here and replacing and phasing out the AK-74 series of weapons going forward into 2020 for the Russian Federation Army. I'm not sure if they set an actual date to start replacing, but uh, it has been accepted as the new rifle going forward for Russia. So let me know down below what you guys think. I'm really hoping in the future that they do add a blueprint for this weapon that really turns it into, like we covered in the AK videos, more of a actual blueprint for the AK-12. As well as, therefore, we would be able to make an actual, accurate version of the RPK-16. To do that, we would just need a 90-degree gas block. We would need a dust cover with a Picatinny rail on it. And then that would really, for the most part, be the two major changes for this weapon. It also would be nice to have a cosmetic blueprint change to the buttstock as well to give us that AK-12 foldable buttstock that we see on those weapons. Also, is give it the more modern look. Very similar to something like a Magpul adjustable buttstock as well. Is what very much what it looks like. So those are really the only changes to the weapon. I know this was actually a user requested video. I, I was going to make this a long time back, but because we didn't have the right parts to do it, I was a little hesitant. But because we made the AK-12 and 15 videos first here, um, I figured this would be appropriate since we're utilizing the same blueprint for the steel curtain. So again, check out that video. I'll leave it down below if you're interested in how to unlock that if you don't have the steel curtain. And I go over how to unlock it and everything like that. Very difficult challenge. Uh, but there's 12 steps to it, but totally worth it for this blueprint of the AK-47. The steel curtain is just a beautiful weapon, and uh, I've used it on and off a lot, and I always come back to it, and I fall in love with it again. It's really one of the best, I think, weapon setups in the game. So with these attachments here, it handles really well, and I'm really a fan of this as well. I use it online a little bit, and it's definitely a viable option if you're interested. So go ahead and let me know what you guys think below. Also, let me know what you guys are thinking about Season 2 so far. 
Are you enjoying it? Are you liking it? Are you enjoying the content that we see with the battle stream or in the store? Personally, I'm looking for a little bit better blueprint selection for the store items. We've been a little bit disappointed what we have so far this season, but we had to have some good ones. And we're not even at the halfway point, so I really can't be too picky yet. Also, I think we have Warzone hopefully on the way here either this Tuesday, the 3rd, or also the 10th. So go ahead down below and let me know what you guys think of that. Let me know if you're interested in Warzone or the Battle Royale as well. What I'm going to do is leave you guys with a gameplay for the RPK-16. Um, also be sure to, if you're trying to get a hold of me, if you want to get in contact, to check out the Instagram and Twitter links down below. If you have a question for me, that's going to be the best spot to do it. Also, if you're interested in the Discord, that is down there below also. And also be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're really liking the content. And we've really grown quite a bit in the past few months, so I want to thank you all for that. We've gone from over, I think, less than 100 subscribers back in the beginning of the game to over 12,000 now. So thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. Be sure to comment down below, and I really try to isolate a good amount of time to get back to everybody and answer all your questions and get back to you with the feedback. So I appreciate communicating with you guys. Discord's down there. Go ahead and leave a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And I'll leave you guys with the gameplay of the RPK-16 on Crash, using it as the assault assaulter or the assault rifle role with that closest that we can do to resemble the 14.6 inch barrel. So until next time, Buffering Gaming, out.